You're listening to the What to Read Next podcast, episode 52. Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. This podcast is hosted by Laura Amin, a voracious reader of romance and young adult novels. In this podcast, Laura interviews fellow readers and authors and asks them for book recommendations of what we should read next. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Sugar Eyes. So happy for you to tune in. Today, I want to share my top five books that I picked that I read this past summer. I do this episode every quarter, tune into episode 35 for spring picks and episode 8 for my winter picks. Over the past few months, I read 40 books. In terms of genre, I read YA contemporary, literary fiction, thrillers, and historical fictions. Yep, I have diversified my genres. And if there is a theme for this quarter, is that I chose books that had strong female protagonists. Now let's get to today's books. The first book is How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. This book came from two recommendations. The first was from Clara, as we chat about it in episode 39. She shared about this book, and I was like intrigued about it. But then the second book recommendation came from Sarah's from Sarah's Bookshelf's personalized book recommendation. She offers a service where you actually fill out a survey and she actually sends you a personalized book recommendation for you to pick up. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to try it. I've heard it a couple of times. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to read this. And I completely love this. This book is compared from Me Before You. And you can see the parallels, but the good news is there's no major twist points. Like, and you're not going to be crying like Me Before You. <laughs> so that's kind of exciting. So this is the story of Margaret, who after an accident, her life completely changes. We see her path towards recovery and how her life gets transformed. She's a strong female protagonist who against all odds gets everything she wants. It's a really good book to read. Uh, I encourage you to read it. There's romance, but it's not powering. There's a, there's a there's a big arc of growth that happens. It's a coming of age pod process. The next book is Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. This is my first dive into historical fiction that did not disappoint. This is a story of Elisa and Marcel, a grandmother and granddaughter, as they navigate Cuba during the revolution and present day. This book is atmospheric. You get to experience Cuba and its history. There's romance, but it doesn't overpower the story. Um, it's a really good book. It definitely did transform. For me, I grew up in Puerto Rico, but I grew up around the exile community in Cuba. So I knew about the revolution, but I didn't realize how much it impacted after reading in this book it just kind of like brought me back to my childhood so it was definitely really really challenging it's definitely a book that completely changed shift my perspective so I'm so grateful to have read this book the next book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is by far my favorite book in 2018 so far. This is another historical fiction that follows Evelyn as she shared her story to a journalist. Evelyn is a Hollywood starlet who came from nothing and made a name for herself. Yes, she married seven times, but her greatest love affair is not one of her husbands, which is pretty interesting. I absolutely love this story. This is a must read. And I finished reading and I couldn't wait to reread it again. It was one of those books that I was like, I need to read this over and over. It's amazing. Amazing. So I hope you pick it up. The next book is Charlotte Walsh Likes to Win by Joe Piazza. This book is Charles Amber ran for Senate. What will her campaign look like? This book dives into the world of politics as a woman running for office. It's a timely read. It's actually set in 2018, present day. So it's set in the current political climate. It's a really good book to read. I read this in 24 hours. I couldn't put it down. Um, I felt... I feel Charlotte was like really one of those characters that she actually dive into. She was not perfect, and that's what I love about it. She had her quirks, she had her moments, she had things that she did that she did not. She did not feel proud about that, and it was definitely an interesting book. So I definitely encourage you to read this. The final book is Anonymous Girl by Sarah Pagenan and Gru Hendricks. This author duo does it again. The Wife Between Us was one of my top picks for the winter, and I got to read an advanced readers copy of the new thrillers, and it was so good. This book is a psychological experiment, and it's full of plot twists, and you couldn't put it down. It's definitely, it's best to go blind, but all I can say is about a woman who goes to take a psychological survey, and she gets immersed in this experiment over the course of months. Uh, the book comes out in January 2019, and I cannot recommend this enough. You should definitely pick it up. An honorable mention is The Banker's Wife by Christina Augers. This is a financial crime drama about offshore banking. There are two strong female protagonists who are in the business of uncovering the truth. This is a page turner. I read it in 24 hours. I couldn't put it down. Um, it's a really good book. It's, it's Even though it's loud as a domestic thriller, it's actually not a domestic thriller. I think it's a financial thriller. Um, it's a really good book, so I definitely encourage you to read this. My disappointed read, I have to mention this, so there's one disappointed read. It's The Incendiaries by R.O. Kwan. I ended up reading this book because it was short. It was about 200 pages, but boy, I completely hate it. The storyline follows a cult leader and a couple where the female main character joins the cult. 
it dries, it dives into the role of Christianity, privilege, fanatism. There's a major issue that happens in the book that we're not dealt in or completely ignore. Um, this book has trigger warning, has sexual assault, it has, you know, um, protest, but the sexual assault is a big trigger warning for me, so I definitely want to share that. Um, the book has many issues, and I encourage you to pick it up. Just skip it. Don't pick it. Um, it's not worth it. <laughs> so those are my top picks for the summer, and my disappointment read. This fall, I'm planning to read more thrillers and historical fiction. For the month of October, I'm planning to read all things thrillers, so I can't wait to share those with you. Thank you so much for listening. For show notes with the list of book mentioned in this podcast, please visit whattoreadnextblog.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider leaving me on iTunes. It's the best way for this podcast to discover by new bookish audience. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a fantastic day.